and we're live. All right. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back to the castle. Thanks for staying tuned. We, we're going to dive into Dev Diary 22 now. Um, so, Iri, do you want to give us a summary on um, the religion, especially Catholicism? Yeah. So, in this Dev Diary, we kind uh, they introduced religion again uh but instead of i guess focusing on i think the last dev diary they they kind of gave us an introduction and then they did a bit more focus on to islamic religion in this dev diary it was basically the two core religions of europe of catholic and orthodox so uh the catholic religion is actually in knights of honor 2 more or less very similar to the same kind of structure and how it worked more or less in koh1 uh, if you're the Pope, you can call a crusade or do an excommunication. Um, but one of the subtle differences, I guess, is that they have this introduction of cardinals. So in order to become the Pope, you need to get one of your priests or priests, clerics, uh, into the cardinal uh, group. And then from the cardinal group, they can get uh, elected as Pope. Uh, so that that's a subtlety that I guess is a bit more different than Knights of Honor 1. Mm -hmm. Um and also the kind of the big flavor that's different here is that there's a lot more uh, relation and actions to be taken uh, between the Catholic nation of you, I guess, and with the papacy. So there's a lot of importance to sustaining relations with the papacy and the Pope. So you get both a lot of bonuses and negatives for having, you know, good and bad relations respectively with the Pope. Um, and more or less everything else about Catholicism was basically the same of course when a crusade is called then one of your knights gets booted up to become a crusader he gets some special crusader units and also those uh he i think they mentioned that you, he, they he gets some units from the local area so potentially i guess that's maybe the unique like local strong units that are like the best in that local area that maybe get dumped onto the army as well and then that army from what i understand uh basically is self-governed by ai itself and it will just run off into the wherever the crusade is going um and crusader armies have no longer are affected by attrition so you, they will no longer uh it sounds like uh, the devs have explained that the the crusader armies are are strong and they will go to where they need to go and they will crusade and they will cause havoc and you may end up getting control of you know a place in jerusalem or something like this um <clears throat> now the kind of big difference i would say in this uh, dev diary for religion was with regards to orthodoxy so uh in the orthodox you can now kind of declare yourself to be like an independent church now this is where i need you to help me out Chapo, because it wasn't completely clear, clear to me both in the dev diary and in the stream diary itself um if the so when you declare independence uh as a, as a <clears throat> orthodox church are you now like a completely your own church or are you still technically subordinate to the patriarch in constantinople because in the orthodox that they explained uh, they mentioned that you that you still need to kind of elect the uh, what's it, the ecumenical patriarch in Constantinople, uh, but does that come from all the Orthodox nations or just the nations that have not declared independence? I am honestly I'm not sure about this. It's a really good question, and I'm not too fond in in how the Orthodox religion works, so I basically can't answer this question. Okay. Well, we'll get back to it. In, uh, but, uh, maybe yeah, a little but later. sure. They, I, I didn't get it from. I didn't get it either from. They didn't talk about it in in the death diary, but I, I didn't catch it from the from the stream as well. Yeah, I think if I rewatch the stream, I, I think they will have clarified it. But it, it, I wasn't paying all that attention, so mm -hmm. I have to mm -hmm. go back and check again. Um, <clears throat> and so that's kind of at least somewhat how the Orthodox works. That there is like a pope in constantinople and people have to re-elect him kind of like the pope in rome uh and then these orthodox uh countries can declare independence now whether that independence means you're no longer part of the election of the of the patriarch is unknown to me at the moment uh the clerics 
Uh, in general, what they've also done is that when your cleric is like not really busy doing anything, you can send them on missions to the main centers of your religion. So if it's if you're Orthodox, it's Constantinople. If it's uh, Catholicism, it's obviously Rome. So you just send them there, and while they're there, they get bonuses to so like books and gold and things like this, uh, which is a nice little uh, feature because often. In Knights of Honor 1, you'd have your cleric, and then eventually you'd have nothing to do with him, and you just have him sitting in your court doing nothing. So I, I think having a small feature like that keeps your, uh, your your royal court a bit more active to you know maximize uh, what you're doing with your people all the time, keeping the game a bit busy. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, one of the, I guess I, so this is, so that was more or less the summary from the diary itself. I, we can now start talking kind of about the, uh, some of the things that uh, were the mentioned questions on the streams and, and the questions. Yeah. yeah, the details maybe. I mean, um, one, one major, one major difference <clears throat> between Catholicism and the Orthodox religion is that um, Catholic um, kingdom get a lot of, of boosts on, on commerce on the economy um, but they have to really take care about the papacy and relation to the papacy and the other catholic kingdoms um, and they have to pay for for crusades happening so the pope is coming to you asking for asking you for money and it it, it will be a, a decent amount like as they wrote in the death diary um, and i mean you can review refuse it but you probably shouldn't do it too often because the papacy and the other Catholic kingdoms won't really appreciate it. And the bonus on the Orthodox um, kingdoms is that they do get a lot of books. Like Orthodox kingdoms have the biggest boost on book production, which comes in very handy for leveling up your knights. I mean, you can do it for marshals, you can do it by fighting, um, but you can also... Yeah, like pay him or educate him, and for this you need books, of course. Another uh, subtle difference between Orthodox and Catholicism was that mentioned in the stream was that uh, Orthodox nations don't really get mad at each other for taking Constantinople. It's more of like something you actually want to do as a Orthodox kingdom, whereas in Catholicism, if you take over the papacy in in Rome, the, everyone hates you, kind of thing. So that, that's a, di a different kind of strategic play. Um, another mention about the Crusades uh, in on the stream was for the Catholics, Catholic, Catholic nations was uh, they the goal would can, or, or the goal for the Crusade can either be like a uh, Muslim nation or it could be to liberate a specific holy location. I, and there was a question on the stream whether you could also call a crusade on the Orthodox uh, religion, uh, but that wasn't, uh, they didn't actually know because they've done, <laughs> they mentioned they've done so many iterations of the game that uh, at one point you could, he said, yeah, uh, yeah you mentioned Georgie. Yeah. And then he was like, uh, but I don't remember if you can do it now. So yeah, yeah, we have not really a clear answer on that one. Um okay so for for the question like one one interesting very good question is how hard will it be to become uh, to get one of your clerics to become pope and the very good question actually um the the answer to that was that it will be much more complicated than in, in the first uh, Knights of Honor, because you have to get your cleric to become a cardinal at first, like I already told in, in the summary. And the clerics do need, uh, they do need some kind of reputation and experience in, in, their, um, in their doing, and they need certain skills or a certain skill level to make it more likely for them to become uh, Pope, but also, which they talked about in the stream, which I thought is <laughs> very cool. You could like um, try to assassinate other um, cardinals, especially when they're in the Sistine Chapel electing a new pope. 
Um, and yeah, maybe get some of your opponents out of the way, basically. Yeah, of course. Or bribe them. I think, <laughs> I mean, bribe them. That's what the Pepsi is all about, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but once you are elected Pope, uh, one of the things they mentioned was that uh, you can grant independence uh, for a nation that is subordinate to another nation. Uh, I'm guessing that's a Catholic nation. So if a Catholic kingdom has a vassal, then the Pope can technically come in and be like, no, you're no longer a vassal, you're an independent kingdom. Uh, so that's interesting, because that was for sure not a uh, feature in Knights of Honor 1, so th that gives more reason to become Pope. You can mess about with your opponent's vassals and maybe break them apart more. But the, the, the good thing about if if your own cleric or your own cardinal gets Pope, you do have some some influence. For example, you can ask, you as a kingdom can ask the Pope for excommunicating another, um, another kingdom. And I think there was, there was another uh, feature you could do as well. Um, they mentioned that All if the more. papacy itself um, is destroyed, uh, or sorry, yeah, sorry. So if, yeah, if, First is first of all, you can't play the papacy. Um, they mentioned that like a lot of people want to play as the papacy, and you just can't because it's too complicated. It's just too dynamic in the game. But they made it very clear that like they want to keep it open for modders, kind of thing. So modders mm -hmm. might uh, mm -hmm. be able to construct something there for people to play as the papacy. Uh, but just all the dynamics that were involved with playing as the papacy was just too much work for just one nation, I suppose. Um, which makes sense in a developing perspective. Uh, if the Pope does own Rome, but loses Rome, does the papacy become destroyed? And uh, there's no way for the papacy to like expand. So the papacy always starts with Rome and it cannot expand. So it doesn't really happen that the papacy like has the neighboring province and then it loses Rome, but it still exists. It, it always has Rome or it doesn't. Um, so, and, and it doesn't expand. So either Rome exists and it's controlled by the papacy or Rome doesn't exist and the papacy is destroyed kind of thing. Oh, by the way, I just uh, looked it up. You if your cleric is the Pope, then, of course, like I said, you can ask him to excommunicate a kingdom. But the other thing is he can do, you can instigate a crusade. I, I think, did, I, uh, I'm not sure. I think we had some kind of influence on a Pope um, in Knights of Honor 1 as well. Or am I completely wrong? With regards to... I have no idea. There, there were some some options. I think. Yeah, I can't remember. But, but like, just like, just like Super Fursich wrote on a chat, um, he's very happy about that in uh, KOH two, the Pope doesn't take a space in a royal court. Um, the, the same stuff like with the prisoners, and in Knights of Honor one, you could just tell him, okay, please leave my royal court, but um, it's. In most cases, it backfired. Yeah. In KOH, it's, you could make him excommunicate people, but it could fail. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. The, okay, so there was this excommunication feature. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Some, Perfect. Some points about the Crusades. Uh, so once a Crusade is successful, uh, it might give the whatever province it took over to the overlord kingdom from which it came or it might also declare independence and the devs mentioned it's kind of like a toss-up whatever what what particularly happens um uh, uh. and if the papacy is destroyed during this time then the leader of that crusade will likely or if the overlord kingdom from which the, the crusade comes from is destroyed then the leader of the crusade will likely just go rogue and just do his own thing and attack people and i guess declared some independence as an independent nation um so like there was this a little discussion about the white smoke happening yeah and i think i think i really had you had quite an interesting um improvement they could add to the game yeah well i just simply asked like it would be 
sweet if you had some in-game graphic of it actually happening. Uh, so we, when the Pope dies, you see like some little white smoke coming out from Rome, and they said it's going to be yeah, it's not too hard to implement. So they're going to do it. It sounds like yeah. so. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty stoked about that. You know, got my own opinion in there, and yeah, they liked I, it so much that they're going to add it in. They were they they seem to be really happy about this. Yeah. And and George he said yeah it should be done quite easily. Yeah. But like imagine if if you do have white or black smoke happening there then if the pope they couldn't find another pope from the election then I wonder how they will do it actually but if they do it kind of badly it will look like Rome is on fire. I don't I don't think <laughs> at the moment that's the it's possible to not have a new pope, right? But that would be really cool if that was yeah. an option that there was like oh uh, yeah, nobody think, yeah. could decide and like the votes were split or something you know and then for like that much for a certain time period it's like that until maybe some votes cave eventually because of whatever and factors I, you could think about like adding adding this 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 uh possibility that they can't elect a new pope then what will happen to the catholic states Will there be some kind of uncertainty? Will there be a drop in the oh, moral yeah. of, of the clerics? Which, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you can't do anything about it, but that's just how it is, right? Um, but Or maybe if if then a pope gets elected, then there will be a boost in the opinions, whatever. I mean, that's that's like some detailed stuff. I don't know if they have... Yeah. I don't think they have it in the game at, at the current state, but I'm not sure how much work it takes and whether it's worth it but it sure would be would be cool and and a realistic thing yeah i think having a small feature where the pope's just the new pope can't be elected because of indetermination that would be that'd be interesting yeah. and i think you you had it you had it on screen or could you put it on screen for the orthodox um the patriarch you can actually vote for who's becoming the next patriarch. Yes, yes. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, perfect. But uh, I don't know if that's uh, if that if the voting only comes from like the independent churches, or if being an independent church means you don't vote on that. Like uh, that. That's what I was kind of not so clear uh, on. Okay. What, what does it say on there? It says the time to choose a new head of the Orthodox Church has come. Choose a cleric to become the new ecumenical patri patriarch. Yeah, it's okay, not. Okay, now we, we can't get it from this. We can't get it from the picture. Yeah. Uh, uh, one of the things was uh, how is the state of the game? Uh, is it changing a lot? And they, of course, mentioned there's tons of changes. Um, the features are always being modified. But as they did clarify that things are really starting to zoom in and be somewhat uh, consistent. So they're starting to, it sounds like they're starting to polish off some mechanics and, and ideas into real directions. But a I lot of things they, are still being changed. I think they were giving us this information during the last few months. Um, so what I'm picturing is that the game is pretty much set up. And they're tweaking a lot of stuff, um, testing um, how the features would be would be best implemented. Um, do the AI stuff, but what they what they told us that they what they're currently working on is the real time battles. Oh, they about the AI, uh, I I thought that was hilarious on the stream that they were like, oh, is the AI good? And they're like guys <laughs> the ai is good apparently it's like the devs are having struggles trying to like compete with the ai at the moment and Holy shit. uh brad was giving an example where like he would put like two armies like waiting to try and like defend a city from a single invading ai the ai would come down marching his army and then he'd bring in his two armies and as soon as the ai saw these two armies kind of like crouching the ai would just go boop and go the other direction and just like <laughs> yeah, turn crazy. 180 yeah. like oh my god like that's gonna be so difficult to like try and trap ai with like double stack armies and it, it 
I'm excited. I'm excited. It's... I mean, the the AI is so good that it makes the the AI bad again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it was it was quite the opposite in in Knights of 101 because they just like went frenzy. They they didn't consider that you're in there with two armies, well equipped, good armies, and the AI in Knights of 101 was just rushing in there. Yeah. But uh, as Brad was saying, like when he's playing the game it really feels like moving on a real dynamic map where you gotta you move your army here or you gotta position them here and positioning is always key and it doesn't feel like or he said it doesn't really feel like chess it's not so static it's very mm -hmm. dynamic so it's always like you you can't just like trap someone instantly it's you have to really set things up to happen yeah 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 so that's exciting. I, I'm really excited to see that, um, or and play with it, I guess. But it could just be that they don't have, you know, the right people playing the game. That they they don't have people who are able to trick the AI. Uh, you know, usually that's how it happens, right? When you, you humans have mostly always been able to find a way to abuse AI in most yep. games. Yeah. Um, of course, something like chess, we no longer can. AIs uh, can beat any chess player in the world. Uh, but things like StarCraft or Dota, uh, it's still in the air if the AI is technically better than the world's best players or not. Um, and of course, this is something more akin to that kind of, it's an RTS. So uh, even if uh, Black Sea get the best AI in the world, well, it still might not be that that great. There might be a way to abuse it. Yeah. Oh, I just I just remembered one one thing not related to to um religion, but for sure very important. Like at the current state, okay? At the current state, don't pinpoint me down, but at the current state they told us that there will be a better phase. Um they are not sure whether it will be opened or closed, but currently they're saying okay, we definitely want to do a, a better Yes. So that, that's a big one. That's we really want to see that happening, right? Exciting. Hopefully, we get invited. And then we'll be, we will be bringing you guys oh, more yeah. content yeah. for yeah. beta stuff. We'll, we'll bring it oh, all. Yeah, we'll be working OT. Oh, yeah. <laughs> get like yeah. real. Uh, oh, did, did you just read it? Bigs? Like from Super Fuzzy, there's probably gonna be cheesy ways to get an edge on the AI. Yeah, basically like what happens in every game. Yep. <laughs> uh, I think that's okay. that's it. Yeah. yeah. Dev diary concluded. Uh, I don't I don't know if we mentioned, but we apologize for not having the first dev diary on time earlier. On uh, this, but this dev diary is on time, so. Uh, we do not apologize Absolutely. for this dev diary. <laughs> uh, but we did also have our new gameplay content out there. Give that video a watch. We, I had to fucking piece that together out of uh, our previous uh, dev diary because it was all in the background. I don't believe this yeah. newest dev diary, they had any new video game content imaging. So uh, I don't think there's any new content there to be no. pulled from. I, was I mean, basically, what, what the the really inter interesting thing would be the real time battles to see them. Yeah, uh, I mean, we if you go really far back, they have previews of real time battles. There's like trailers of that. You know what I'm talking about, Chapo? Yeah, yeah. There is. Yeah, in like, uh, like from the announcement trailer. I think so. They showed real time happening. Uh, it was clearly okay. still in like development but like yeah yeah um but that's been a long time now so uh, yeah. it must be way i, I, I don't now. think yeah uh, you probably can't tell a lot and from it about they how, seem to how be it keeping it be. like really far back too they really don't want to show it so either they maybe they just didn't put much time into it and they're kind of rushing now or maybe they've they're really going to spring something amazing on us that would be pretty cool yeah let's hope yeah. it's the the second sure okay yeah all right let's wrap her up 
thanks guys for coming to watch. We'll see you in the next Dev Diary. Yeah. Uh, and again, may the sun always shine on you. Yeah, guys, thank you so much. Take care and let the sun always shine on you. Bye.